Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. Welcome back. Uh, we got some curious stuff to talk about. And this one to start with, you see this tweet from Massachusetts State Police. We have several armed persons accounted for at the scene on, on I-95. They're refusing to comply with orders to provide their information and put down their weapons. We are asking residents of Wakefield and Reading to shelter in place at this time. And uh, here, again, we see an article on this. Heavily armed men claiming to not recognize our laws. Police said the men fled into Wakefield Woods carrying rifles and handguns. This is a bizarre incident, really. I mean, it's strange. It really gets you wondering. There's been so many strange things going on lately. It is really curious, you know, like what questions to ask. I mean, there's a million questions you could ask with this one. It's like, okay, <laughs> you know, you could just go on and on and on. I don't like it. It doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel good at all. As you see, a bizarre incident playing out Saturday morning in Wakefield, Massachusetts. According to local police, during a motor vehicle stop, several heavily armed men claiming to be from a group that does not recognize our laws, exited their vehicles and fled into the wood line near I-95. It unfolded around 1.30 a.m. when a state trooper came across a group of 8 to 10 people refueling on the side of I-95 in Wakefield, suburb of Boston. The group was dressed in military-style uniforms, carrying tactical gear like body cameras and helmets, and had long guns slung over their shoulders. They told officials they were on their way to Maine from Rhode Island for training. Officials said they made two arrests and the rest of the group, which calls itself Moorish American Arms, fled into a wooded area that's now surrounded by police. And there's shelter in place uh, orders in that area as well as I-95 being closed. And here you see uh, one of the men that they have Looks like he's uh, arrested, arms behind his back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Police negotiators are talking to those hiding in the woods. We're trying to successfully and peacefully resolve this. Approximately eight males fled into the woods carrying rifles and handguns and appeared to be contained in the wooded area adjacent to the highway. No threats were made, but these men should be considered armed and dangerous. This is really wild, as you see I-95 there blocked off. It got me thinking, and I found in a forum that somebody had posted about uh, Operation Jade Helm, which is interesting to say the least with the way things are turning out now in the country. Again, I got the message from the guides um, back in the previous election cycle in which we got number 45 uh, elected, that there was a Trojan horse going on. And I didn't fully get it at first, you know, but now it, I could definitely see what it was talking about, what the guides were talking about. So this was a special operation that was not about necessarily a Red Dawn scenario. Uh, this was more about perhaps what could be viewed as a second civil war or insurrection. It's really interesting. It's realistic military training, role playing, and the the people involved is the thing as well. It Jade Helm was a challenging eight week joint military and interagency unconventional warfare exercise conducted throughout Texas, New Mexico, Arizona, California, Nevada, Utah, and Colorado. And, you know, this had Navy SEALs in there, Special Forces, Green Berets, 82nd Airborne. I mean, you had all sorts of stuff involved and other agencies as well. So it was really very curious, and it got a lot of attention. A lot of people wondered what was really going on here. Because this was a massive exercise, as you see. This is the area in which it took place. And uh, 
it, it, it was most definitely apparently geared towards insurrection. Fascinating to look at this, um, especially, and you can see there's articles that talked all about how people were buzzing. Facts about the training exercise causing jitters in Texas. And there's that word that we see all the time, mm -hmm. right? That dirty word. It is. But when you analyze it, and this is from the Trenches World Report, it, it is most likely uh, something that was geared towards perhaps what they've in the intelligence field come to feel at some point in time is going to be an unavoidable civil conflict mm -hmm. in which they had certain states that were designated as, <laughs> um, you know, potentially hostile, so to speak. Uh, looking at different zones, like here you see the red states of Utah and Texas are listed as hostile states, That's part, as is part of Southern California. These states are not geographically continuous. Subsequently, we're looking at Jade Helm 15 as being the suppression of civil resistance. The use of the 83rd Airborne is also suggestive of the fact that authorities anticipate there could be civilian militias rising up perhaps in combination with veterans groups and possibly military units loyal to the citizens of the U.S. Brown state of New Mexico is listed as leaning towards being hostile. Blue states of California, Nevada, and Colorado are listed as being loyal, permissive to military authority and martial law. Light blue state of Arizona is listed as unknown, but leaning towards being friendly. And, uh, you know, again, interagency very curious, you know, Homeland Security involved. And the question was, too, would there be Russian troops involved? As, uh, you know, there was DHS vehicles spotted in Tennessee, and some had said that it looked like Russian troops were there. Very interesting. You know, we are seriously in interesting mm -hmm. times right now. And, you know, all this stuff, I started to seriously get feelings that, as I had seen since 1984, Red Dawn scenario, but that it would be preceded uh, in the 90s. I started to feel it would be preceded by something civil first, is what I was getting as far as the messages and the intuition. Uh, another Florida residential tower ordered evacuated after a safety audit as Surfside's death toll reaches 22. So, yeah, they found some uh, flaws here, and it's a residence of a 156-unit condo in North Miami Beach, not far from the collapsed high-rise in Surfside. While well, they were ordered to leave immediately for their own safety, other area buildings are also being audited for problems as well. Crestview Towers in North Miami Beach was built in 1972, and on Friday, North Miami Beach authorities ordered all the residents to evacuate by the evening as the building was judged not safe. Yeah, I, I bet you anybody who lives in one of these condos or high rises right now all across the United States everywhere is probably watching those really, really close. Because could you imagine like somebody walking up to your home and knocking on the door and say, you have to leave because we found a crack in your foundation at any moment. That's got to be that's got to feel really horrible. Yeah, most definitely. Well, I feel good that we only have one floor. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a lot less structure to come down on us. Mm -hmm. And by the way, under, underwater fire erupted at a pipeline in the Gulf of Mexico. And our brother Raven was telling me about this last night. So this was an offshore complex, which was operated by Mexican oil company Pemex. Pretty wild. And again, just another coincidence. Just another coincidence, of course. Of course. I know. There's so many of these mm -hmm. coincidences. Yeah. And there's so many landslides and floods going on. And wow, when you Explosions. watch this video, oh my God, oh, this that is was amazing. Mm -hmm. This was just incredible to see. It was um, like something out of a horror movie. Mm -hmm. 
and we have two killed, 20 missing as this landslide just plows through everything. And there's this video here. And you just see a uh, lady here is like pointing up here. And there's just this wall of water that comes down and people start to scramble. Mm -hmm. And it just washes everything away. Uh, incredible. And so let's pray for everybody over there because you got about 20 people that are still not accounted for. And let's hope that they will be found alive. Mm -hmm. And by the way, ransomware attack yet again hits hundreds of U.S. companies. And guess who did it? Uh-oh. Well, it wasn't Dr. Evil, no. but it was Re-Evil. <laughs> Re-Evil. Oh, my gosh. Now they're getting, now they're getting cute. I know, right? It's getting so comic bookish. Yeah. Uh, yep. A major Russian-speaking ransomware syndicate appears to be behind the attack. Just another. There's so many of these going on. It seems like it's every day. And we talked about Russia ditching dollar, as we see, prioritizing China and India, de-Westernizing. And, you know, those in the know years ago said, when you see this going on, then you really do have to be concerned about the potential for war breaking out. And when you see, you know, we've talked so much about the U.S.'s military budget but the hardware that keeps rolling out of China and Russia is pretty incredible. As you look at this from Zero Hedge, Putin's city killer. That's quite a, quite a title there. City killer, Russian sub. This is the world's largest nuclear submarine. It's gigantic. It's almost 600 feet long. Mm -hmm. For a submarine, that's enormous. You know, that's like a small cruise ship there. 584 feet long and about 49 feet across, twice the size of the UK Royal Navy's largest submarines. And the other thing that's real scary is that it has AI, artificially, artificial intelligence guided, nuclear tipped underwater drones oh my. that can hit coastal targets 6,000 miles away. In fact, um, as you look at the size of that thing. Wow, that is gigantic. Yep. Yeah, it has advanced Poseidon torpedoes, or basically these nuclear tips. It's armed with six of these nuclear tip Poseidon torpedoes. And they say no other Navy has anything like these. It's kind of... Kind of creepy, guys, isn't it's, it? It's it's pretty ominous, you know. I mean, and the name dubbed the city killer. I know, with everything uh -huh. going on in the Black Sea right now. Yep. And so we have the U.S. Coast Guard rescuing down Boeing 737 cargo pilots. So this was a flight that went down uh, soon after takeoff. And, and this was by uh, Honolulu, Hawaii, due to an engine problem. Um, but... Thankfully, the pilots were able to be rescued. Mm -hmm. Curious with, you know, all the things we've had going on. You, you just look at everything with a little bit more suspicious eye. And we'll watch the track of Elsa as it is a cat one right now. Um, it should lose some strength as it goes over Cuba. And it looks like right now they're expecting landfall somewhere on the west coast of Florida. Potentially, you know, around the Tampa area or, or just above. And so we'll have to keep an eye out for that. And let's hope that it will not be anything severe. Mm -hmm. As we know, it doesn't have to be too strong as far as the, uh, the winds go to create damage with the flooding that we see. So we see this article. It's been interesting. We've been seeing uh, people that are living longer and longer and longer and here we see that they say by 2100, basically your pro projected maximum lifespan will be about 130. Wow. Yeah, that will be getting to be what, you know, 7580 is right now. Yeah. So, uh, you know, if we could get through this time frame, <laughs> this is a big thing. I know. And especially with the craziness that we see from the leadership on this planet. Mm-hmm.
Hitler's Stonehenge, possibly linked to development of the Nazi flying saucer. So there was a concrete circle that really resembled Stonehenge, approximately 60 feet wide, 30 feet tall. What were the Nazis doing with this? Well, they think it might have had something to do with the development of these flying bells, flying saucers, which are very real. Uh, there was classified documentation of this, which has been released. You know, uh, somebody sent me a link to a video for Jason Rice, uh, who was, he says he was part of the secret space program. And listening to him, it's, this was a talk he did recently, I think just last week, a few days ago even. And he was talking about encounters with the Draco and, and up on the moon base and stuff. It rang pretty true. It felt pretty true. I, and he's talked about the dogmen before, too. It's now, mm. yeah, we always look at all this as, with, a, with a little bit of um, a suspicious eye again, because, you know, we know there's tons of disinfo. And if we are, you know, on a planet that is really under uh, draconian control, then they obviously don't want too much truth coming out. But then at the same time, more and more people are being contacted by the good guys, quote unquote, you know, the forces of the Galactic Federation and other benevolent beings uh, like the Pleiadians. And so you really can't hide all this for long. That's that's the, the thing. It's, it's coming out. Yeah, things are definitely gaining momentum. Yeah, so it's really kind of about, you know, that they're, they're going to do damage control mm -hmm. and they're going to kind of steer things. Just like when we go back to talking about these exercises, like the Operation Jade Helm. Six years ago, maybe, you know, I, a lot less people six years ago would believe that we have the potential for a civil war. Yeah. Than now. I mean, way more people now can see where the potential for a civil war is. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, of course, when we know things are uh, script, <laughs> sure, mm -hmm. it, it, it's, it's just a matter of the timing. Yeah. You don't know the timing. And, um, you know, it makes me think of a William Cooper quote where he said that, you know, he talked about all this stuff, too. And Behold, A Pale Horse, classic book. Mm -hmm. And, you know, probably still available out there, I would think. Though sometimes when I go look for books that I've had, sometimes multiple copies of, uh, all of a sudden they're unavailable or they're like $200, hundreds, yeah. $200 $300, $700. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. But he did say that he thought that something big would happen on a particular day. And that day is right about here, July yep. 4th. Yep. He said he didn't know the year, but he knew it was planned for the 4th of July mm -hmm. when the big event would happen. So just something to you know keep in mind as well mm -hmm. as we see. This was just fascinating. And, you know, boy, we could go into the Nazis in World War II and their incredible desire to learn and understand everything occult. And, you know, really, when you look back to Raiders of the Lost Ark, it really was kind of like that. They were they were tracking down all sorts of relics, looking for objects of power, looking for esoteric knowledge, and reaching out and communicating uh, it with beings that, you know, now we would recognize as being basically the Draco and the Greys that served them, along with certain... Nordic aliens that could look very benevolent, but beware. <laughs> yeah. You know, looks can be deceiving. So, as always, guys, thanks for your support on Ko fi and Patreon. And uh, thank you guys also for your orders at Medicinal Foods. Um, you know, that is great to see that positive feedback too, where people have already gotten their products. Yeah. So their quickly. shipping is really fast and the service is really great. So it's wonderful. Thank yeah. You. That's, that's awesome. And there's a link on every video there. I think the link was um, down. And so for, for this morning, so we sent a, a message to them to check that out. Not sure if they're doing something with the website, but it should be up again shortly. As always, guys, stay prepared. God bless and namaste. Namaste.